Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to my shop. In this quick video, I'm going to show you how I adjusted the speed limits on my PSI Turncrafter Commander lathe. Now I got a new motor in this, so I had to change and set my speed limits on it. This is a great lathe. I had it for a couple of years. I think the warranty covers up to three years, so I was happy that they gave me a new motor. I had to pay to ship the old one back, but still, that's a lot better than having to buy a new motor. When you do this, you're going to have to change your speed limits for your low ends and your high ends. And it's got this little control box inside of it. It makes it pretty easy to do uh, once you learn how to do it. And I'm going to show you how to do it here. So, stay tuned. So I have this Turncrafter Commander lathe that I bought through Penn State Industries and the motor uh, bearing started to go bad on me so they sent me out a replacement. I was surprised. I, I guess the warranty must be three years. I just had to ship back the old motor and pay for shipping on that. And in putting in the new motor, of course I had to set the high and low end RPMs for the head. And that's done inside this box here. You got the on off switch, your speed dial, and that's a reset button. So what I will do is you got these three screws here that I will take out to get this box down and out. Then I can take the cover off and I can get to the I think they call it the Moffitt screws for setting the high and low end RPMs. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so in the back of the lathe here, we've got our power cords. This one is a uh, power supply from the wall outlet. This one goes over to feed the motor head. And this one goes in to read the RPMs and so forth at the motor head. So what I'll do is first uh, take these three screws out so I can get this box out. And this last screw I'm going to kind of hold the back of the box to keep it from sliding in on me. Otherwise it's going to slip around on me. And then the box just kind of slips over and out like this so we can work on it. Goes out. I flip it upside down, and then I've got four screws here to take off this cover. And that comes over. What you can do is, uh, there's some debris in there and dust from the turning because it's got some of these vent holes in it, so some dust and stuff gets in there. What I'll do is kind of vacuum that out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring this up on top here to make it easier to work with. In this box here, we have this heat sink for cooling. We have all the different uh, parts and stuff to it. Down in this area down in here, there are three Moffat screws to set the speeds at. And I'll get in closer on that. Okay, so hopefully I've got a clear focus here, but these are the three Moffat screws, and we'll use a very tiny Phillips head screwdriver, or flat tip. So I'm going to use one of these engineer screwdrivers. That seems to be the best that fits into the slot for those Moffat screws, and I'm using the flat tip on this one. Basically, we've got these three Moffats here to set. They're each marked, one with an L, H, and an F. Now, the ones we're going to be adjusting is we're going to turn the motor on at lowest speed, setting this dial down here to the lowest speed, and then we'll increase the L Moffat until we get up to the desired speed that we want. Then we'll turn this dial all the way up to full speed, then we'll adjust the H Moffat to the top end speed that we want. Okay, I'll see how well we can make all this visible as I'm adjusting these here and so you can see the speed on the gauge here also. I've got this upside down so okay so I've got that at the lowest speed there. I'm going to turn this elm off it. Counterclockwise I think we'll slow it down. Well, that speeds it up. So we'll go down a little bit. I like to get around eight or nine hundred I think. So that looks pretty good. About 800 to 900. Now I'm going to crank up the speed and adjust the high end. do is to put this cover back onto this box. I'll put the screws back in, mount it back in down there. Okay, so I've got the box placed back under here. 
got my screws carefully started and I'm going to screw them in with a, uh, by hand with a screwdriver rather than a power driver because this is a plastic box that these screws are going into. I don't want to over torque them and strip it out so just get them good and snug just kind of finger tight and then that's in there pretty solid. Now I like to keep it at these uh, speed limits because if you saw before when I got up a little too high it starts vibrating and don't want to have that vibration when I'm working on turning. So that's about it. Got that adjusted well and all set to go. Well wrap this up Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, please give me a like and share it with your family and friends. If you want to see what else I may come up with in the future, please subscribe. Thank you.